Good morning, everyone. Good morning, guys and girls. Hi, hello. My name is EJ, and I am here again with another narrated Art Time Labs video for us to take a look at and, you know, dissect, decipher, inspect, uh, look at retrospectively. Hopefully, we could learn a thing or two from it. This is why I do this. This is my jam. Um, so, yeah, I record all my art creations and I look at it retrospectively and kind of just talk about it <laughs> so um, and then put it up in YouTube so I could embarrass myself because that's what I like to do I'm just jo joking <laughs> I'm joking I'm joking I don't I don't like making fun of myself but I mean this whole process that I do really is you know I do this just because of the educational aspect of this. So there's always a thing or two you can learn from from every single illustration slash sketch that you do. They're all learning stepping stones to something that you could achieve in your art world, in your art journey. So yeah. Anyways, today we are taking a look at another speed paint that I did for the daily spit paint group uh daily spit paint group is a group i'm part of in facebook we do daily spit paints or speed paints um one of the rules in this particular group is that everything you do must be done in 30 minutes no more no less well actually you could do it less but it's really hard to pull it off doing a 30 minute uh illustration is really really difficult <laughs> i kid you not it's it's a rough time to try and complete a speed paint but lo and behold it's a good rule to have um it basically trains us artists from being too caught in the details because you know us we're just too much of a perfectionist and we'll just try to just make everything looks perfect <laughs> when lo and behold there's no such thing as perfect in this world so yeah but anyways daily spit paint a uh, wonderful group that i'm part of every day we they post four prompts for us to choose from uh the prompt that i chose for this particular uh day is called artist lifestyle and i honestly kid you not i really really drew a blank for this particular prompt um and I just have those days. Some days I would get a prompt and I would get zero clue, zero clue as to what to do. Um, so I decided to just go simple, you know, artists. I figured I might as well just paint an artist and then just keep it as that, you know, <laughs> why not? <laughs> so this is basically what I did. I basically just drew someone painting on a canvas and just kind of made it my focal point because I really couldn't think of anything else. Now, the reason why I decided to make a lesson out of this, out of all the hundreds of daily spit paints I've done, I do a lot of speed paints and spit paints. Um, and not all I put up in my portfolio for good reason. I really like to jury my work. Um, I really, you know, try to choose the best ones. So that's not necessarily the case at most times. Most times I would pick a specific illustration, not because it is my favorite one or not because it is the best one, but it's because there's something unique about that particular illustration. Case in point is this particular illustration right here. Idea wise, there's nothing stellar about it. Execution-wise, there's nothing spectacular about it. The one reason that I decided to put this in my portfolio and kind of make a video out of this is because of this color scheme that I came up with it. And now would actually be a good time for me to be talking about a color scheme because lo and behold, I'm about to do the coloring part of this process. So what I just did, in case you guys have not, notice that is that i decided to grab a gradient map uh slash i use a gradient tool in krita to create a gradient background now the gradient colors i chose is obviously green and that was completely random i wasn't you know seriously thinking oh i'm gonna do green you know 
It was just like a random choice. Same thing as this palette that I just picked. I picked the predominantly orange palette. Um, when I lay down the background, I have a vague idea of like completely obliterating it eventually. Um, so when I picked the color palette, those predominantly browns, I was really mainly thinking of like the color skin tone, if I'm not wrong. I didn't really have like a set agenda of a color scheme in my head. That was all just random choice, right? Um, but it ended up working out so perfectly. Like, I don't know what made me think of doing green and orange because I've never personally have had that color scheme or I've never consciously picked those color schemes before but it works so great in this illustration like I don't know how or why well I mean I know how or why exactly they're a good color scheme um for the uninitiated the reason why orange and green is a very good color combo is because they're actually semi not necessarily analogous because really analogous is right next to each other and if I was to pick an a color that's analogous it would really be more yellow and green or yellow and orange those would be analogous colors green and orange aren't really analogous colors they're more split complementary of purple right like if I had added a hint of purple on this illustration together with that orange together with that green then i would have ended up with a split complementary color scheme now if you know anything about color theory the colors that work best with each other are typically the ones that are equal in distance to each other so orange green and purple are all equidistant to each other and that's the reason why they work together now I don't consciously think of this, right? Half the time, I just kind of end up with a color scheme that I've already been used to. Or I would do the split complementary in my head and kind of picture the color wheel in my head and kind of just go off of there. Now, I'm not successful at all times. I was talking about this in my last video. Sometimes my colors are just really janky and really weird and really off when I would just randomly pick it. But sometimes it just works. Um, so in this case, it just totally worked. The orange was just a random choice in my part i was looking for like a skin tone but i ended up with something that was a uh, semi-saturated brown um, so that's where the orange came from and the green was just a, a completely random background choice that i was eventually going to end up covering up originally i think if i'm not wrong since this was a while back originally i think i had a vague idea of covering everything up i basically just wanted something in the background just to start things out with and that's the reason why i chose green but then when i ended up with the orange and when i ended up with the green and i was looking at it like at this point in time at the illustration when i'm looking at everything together i realized that it works that I didn't really need to erase the background because that green goes very, very well with that orange. And so I ended up just going with the flow with this particular illustration and just leaving things as is just because it was working. And you know what I realized? I think I eventually added some yellow on this illustration too. I'm going to have to take a look at this again um, while we're watching this together because I didn't make notes of it. I realized that if I had added yellow, and I think I added yellow at the very, very center where the light source is coming from, because if you look at the illustration, we could see that the light source is coming from behind the girl. It's a backlit scene, basically, right? And if I'm not wrong, if I had added like the really bright yellow, that actually makes this whole piece very, very analogous. Because if you do orange, yellow, and green, then yeah, that would be like three analogous colors all in one illustration. And they make a really good color scheme. So anyway, so that's the reason why I picked this particular illustration to join 
my portfolio just because of that color scheme it was completely accidental again this is the whole bob ross moment getting into a happy accident moment and this is the reason why i have this really weird coloring um method in my illustration i typically would do my colors with the random mech brush set in a hue variation and the reason why i do that is because i try to have as many happy accidents as I could, you know, in the hopes that I would come up with something really, really cool looking. In the case of this particular illustration, I ended up with something really, really cool looking, which is the orange and green color scheme, which I don't do before. I've never really done it before. And that's the reason why I'm like, wow, this worked out really, really great. And look, oh, yes, I did the yellow. Check that out. So I, I did the yellow towards the center. There it is. That's my main light source, yellow. So that is completely analogous. If you look at the color wheel right now, you see the orange towards the left, yellow towards the middle, and then towards the right is green. Put those three combos together, and it's a lethal, lethal combo just because it looks good. So yeah. Anyways, I got totally off the subject on those colors. Um, since I've talked a lot about the colors i think now would be a good time to talk about exactly what <laughs> i've been doing for the past 12 minutes so at the very beginning in case you guys haven't noticed or you probably did notice i did a quick sketch i always start out with a sketch now with my daily spit paint i tried doing the whole block approach thing you know and sometimes it works sometimes most of the time it doesn't <laughs> so as much as I would like to do the whole block approach thing, sometimes it just does not work for me. So I just got in the habit of doing three to five minute sketches, you know, no more than that. If I find myself sketching past five minutes, I start to like put it in my head to just quit it, right? Um, that I needed to get out of whatever it is I'm doing because at that point, I, I know that I'm not going to finish the 30 minute time mark. So I try to stop myself for five minutes, just quick sketch, make it messy, it don't matter, lay down there. You, So long as you have a general guide, a general idea of where things are going to be. And so as after that five minutes, I ended up doing the whole gradient background. The green, again, like I mentioned, it was a random choice. It wasn't a very conscious choice. And then after that, I did the whole coloring scheme that I typically do where I choose the random mech brush by David Rivoy, set it to a variation, lay down some colors. Typically I limit myself to eight color palettes. I and I typically get all those palettes from the color palette cinema. It's just a starting point. It's not my final color scheme. It's just for me to get started without thinking too heavily about my colors. And so I randomly pick orange like I mentioned and just lay down a bunch of colors as soon as i lay them down i kind of smudge them around into recognizable shapes that's really the most important thing is that everything is a recognizable shape and as soon as i get the as soon as i finish the smudging and get this recognizable shape then i get something like what we have right now which this is basically what I call my base paint. This is the paint, or this is the layer that I basically would detail on top of. And again, my detailing process is pretty much a three-step process that I do all the way throughout my painting. I basically delineate my edges, which means I make my edges sharper, and I accentuate my shadows if they need darkening. And then I add highlights. And so, yeah, that's pretty much what I do. And that's what you'll see me do in the next few minutes.
So this illustration is practically done. Uh, in about four minutes or so, I'm gonna end up wrapping up this illustration. But as you can see, now that I've started pretty much my detailing process, um, you can see that I was very heavily dependent on the marquee selection. Uh, the marquee selection basically helped me um, isolate the silhouette of the figure from the background, you know? Um, so I do this a lot in all my speed paints and actually in practically all my paintings I do um, my key selections a lot just so that I could isolate like a particular part of the illustration and just work on that particular part of the illustration. Um, so you can see that you know at the very when I was doing my marquee selection I was trying to form the face of the girl so I could you know have a silhouette of the girl because basically this is pretty much just all of the illustration right here it's just pretty much a silhouette of the artist which is this girl right here and you can see that there's hardly any details it's literally just a shape read we see that there's this shape of a girl with a paintbrush um and he's in she's in front of the canvas and you know you can't even really tell like what she's wearing because it's just her and that orange leg, man, I swear, that was like purely accidental. And that's, I really love it. That's what really, really made me like this painting a whole lot was just that orange leg. It's just a random color choice that just ended up there. And I love making happy little accidents like this just because it's unique. Some people don't, I will admit that. Some people think it's really weird that I do this whole thing with the leg where I color one leg differently from the other leg but I, I typically do this just to differentiate them you know like it's easy to pick out which one's right and which one's left I guess just because they're two different colors right and the same but even if I kept it as one color it would have worked just as well honestly so yeah but it's just one of those things that I did and here I am uh, sculpting out the shape of the head a little bit more it was really bothering me that I haven't done it yet I was looking at it and I'm like oh the face just needs to be sculpted some more uh, so yeah I'm basically that's basically just what I'm doing just sculpting the shape of the girl until it finally reads a lot better um, but yeah this this painting is pretty much done for the most part I, I couldn't even really remember what else I added um, aside from that I think I might have worked on the shadow some more if I'm not wrong because I think the shadows does need a little bit more work but I also knew that I didn't really pay a whole lot of attention to it because really what my main focus was was the silhouette of that girl just to see if it reads clear and it reads clear from from afar from where it is right now you could sell the face and that she's wearing she has a ponytail and that she's looking down at the canvas so yeah but yeah again just wrapping up the conversation we've had earlier the the reason why i love this piece is because of the color scheme again it is not the best of my illustration it is not the most wonderful you know illustration i've had it's not exactly the most thought-provoking one either um and it, technic technique wise it's not the most technically proficient one but it is one of the more interesting color scheme that i've accidentally come up with man i do i love bob ross happy accidents thing so yeah but just love the way things work out so anyways thank you guys for watching this video with me i hope you guys learned a thing or two from this video like and subscribe good night